Hi, this is Teresa Law, and thanks for joining us for this new video. And today we're going to talk about understanding value. So first we're going to look at our materials list. If you picked up a kit at the library, you have this, and you have most of the supplies, and if you're working from home, if there's something on the list that you don't have, we'll substitute. So we need medium tone paper. Now in the kits, there's a piece of what we call pastel paper. And I'll get back to that in a minute. If you don't have that, if you have brown paper in the house, which would be craft paper, like the thing paper bags are made out of, that works. Also cardboard, a piece of cardboard is good because it's medium tone, you know, just on the back of a box or something like that. Um, then we have a white charcoal pencil. So those of you who did the lesson two lessons ago when we did white on black, you probably already have a white charcoal pencil. Um, you also should have received a black charcoal pencil. Now, if you didn't get the kit from the library and you don't have the charcoal pencils, you're just fine using a white colored pencil and any dark drawing pencil or a black colored pencil will work fine. And if you don't have that, you could also use a black and white crayon, also works. Okay, then what else do we need? We need a number two pencil. We need an eraser. Again, I use these ones called Factus. I just like them because I do a lot of pastel and charcoal work. We need an eraser. We need a ballpoint pen, and that's for transferring our image. A paper stomp. Now, if you got the kit, you received a paper stomp or two, and they come different ways. This is a thin one that has a point on each end. You can get them thicker, and they come even thicker than this. I have a variety of different sizes. And then there's this type that has a point on one end. And basically all they are, it's paper that's wound very, very tight and it's for shading. So we'll get into this when I do the demonstration. If you are at home and you didn't receive a kit, you can do the same thing with a Q-tip. It's got a soft end and if you need it to be more pointy, you're just going to use your finger to compress the end and you can make it tight and into a point just like the um, paper stumps. The next thing you need is either an emery board or a small piece of um, sandpaper. And what this is for is after you've used a paper stump, obviously it's a large piece. Suppose you didn't want to use black the next time. You use the emery board to basically clean off the end. You can sand it off like that and then reuse these over and over again. They last forever. Um, if you picked up the kit, there's a value scale in there. And if not, we're going to do one in a minute and I'll demonstrate how to do that. And it's basically to practice so that I can show you how to use black and go from black to like a lighter version of black. And then a photo reference. Now it could be a person or it could be a thing, totally your call. Um, if you picked up the kit, I did put a picture of Zendaya in there um, as a sample, but again, you don't have to use her, you could do something else entirely. And if you are going to make your own value scale tonight, then you do need a ruler just to make the boxes for your value square. So that's everything that's in the materials list. Okay, let's talk about the paper for a second. Pastel paper comes in all different colors. Um, here's an array right here. I, when I do my work, I'm normally using the same colors over and over. I like to use the green and I'm partial to this gray blue. I do a lot of pet portraits and these seem to work best because the dogs can be black or tan and they work well with this background. But depending on what you're doing, um, you may pick a color that works better, like I did one that I needed a dog in a pool, so I used this paper as the pool water and did the dog on this, and that worked out fine. So where can you get this? If you go on Amazon, they sell them in pads where you get a kind of a rainbow assortment of colors in the same pad. The other way you can buy them is to buy sheets, which you can get at places like Hobby Lobby, and a sheet like this size is about $2.99, and basically all it is is you fold it and you can make it into quarters and you for each sheet we get four pieces. So this is one quarter of a sheet. Uh, to me this is the most economical because I don't like all the colors that are in the pad. I like to kind of pick and choose my colors. The other way that you can, the other um, item that's available that you can use for pastels and charcoal, it's very similar to this only it's mounted on a board. So it is basically pastel paper, but it's already on a rigid surface. And again, you can always, like I said, you can always use brown craft paper. This is just from a bag from the store. 
you would draw on this with your white and black and the brown paper is the medium tone and I'll explain that in just a second. Okay, so in your kit, if you got a kit, there was something called a value scale and I'm going to show you what that is. So this is an old piece that has a little water damage so it's perfect for what we're doing. Now if you were to buy the big sheets of paper, this is how you would make your quarters. You just fold the paper, score it, voila, and you would make four pieces out of your big sheet. So to make a value scale, if you didn't get one in the kit, I'm just going to put this on a board. We're going to make five boxes on here. And all I'm going to do is lay my ruler on here. And I'm going to go from zero to five, on both sides of my ruler. And then I'm going to mark off the four inch mark, the three inch mark, two, one. Okay. Now, I'm going to close this up so I have squares. I'll show you this. I'll pick it up in a second. Okay. So here's a scale. Now, if you did the lesson two lessons ago where we did um, Baby Yoda, you worked with white charcoal and I showed you an example of the Mandalorian picture where you can do very, very, very hard white or you can soften it to make it lighter. The same thing is true with the black charcoal. Now, charcoal pencils come in different hardnesses. Like I, right here, I have soft, medium, and hard. So I'll take the medium. That's probably what you have. Now, to make a value scale, I want to go from light to dark. And it can go, you can do it either way. I'm going to start with the darkest. So if you have your value scale there and you have your black pencil, we're going to fill in. And again, you don't have to fill the box in completely. This is just an example. This would be what they call a hard black, where you're pressing very hard on the pencil, on the charcoal pencil, and you're getting a very hard black. The next box, I want it to be lighter than this. So I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to put as much pressure on my pencil. Okay, so you can see this is black. This is black also, but it's a little bit fainter. Okay, next time I'm going to do it even a little more gently with the pencil. Okay, now for this next one, what I can do is take my paper stump. I can smooth these out a little bit like this. And then using my paper stump, because I want it even lighter than that, I don't even have to put the charcoal on. I can just use the paper stump and blend it in. So I went from white, if you consider this white, white to very light color, medium, darker, darkest. So when we do this picture tonight, we're going to utilize this. And basically, think of it this way. You are either going to press very, very hard on the pencil when you need it to be extremely black, or you could just barely be touching the paper with the pencil when you need it to be lighter. And then there's always the paper stump where you can pick up charcoal with your paper stump and you can shade with that. Okay. Now the same thing is true with the white pencil. I could do exactly the same thing with my white charcoal, which I'm looking for. Here it is. Um, I could go from extremely hard white where I press very, very hard on the pencil like so. The next one, I would do it hard, but not as hard. Then I could even soften up the pressure a little more so it's a little bit lighter and then barely there. All right, so you have a scale that goes this way. And this is what I would call a hard white when we're drawing. It means put pressure on it and don't try to blend it and you want it to like sit on the surface like that. Now, why do we use this paper? Paper has what they call a tooth. So charcoal and pastel paper is pretty toothy if you want to think of it that way. It has like ridges and the reason for that is Charcoal is pretty um, hard, and pastels, pencils are very hard too. You can sharpen them, so that means that like, there's body to it. This kind of paper with tooth on it kind of picks up the color from the pencil easier. Now, if we ever get to a point where we're doing like pen work, the paper that you would use for pen work would be a very smooth surface with no tooth because you want the pen to glide across the surface. So the choices that we make with the paper relate closely to the type of project that we're doing. Okay, so that's a value scale. Now, for tonight's thing, you can either, if you printed something out, it just needed to be a black and white picture only because it's going to make it easier for you to visualize what you're doing. Um, 
Again, I gave you Zendaya because she's kind of popular right now. She went from Disney to movies, so I think everybody knows who she is. But you could have also done something with an object. So here's the Zendaya handout. You can, if you have an object handy, you could use an object. This I just got off the internet, but this isn't even charcoal. Suppose you're home and you didn't get charcoal pencils. This is just basically dark pencil and white colored pencil. So the white colored pencil, let me put this on a board so you can see it. The white colored pencil is what I'm, whoops, that's a little crooked, is what I'm using for my highlights. I'll bring this up here. And I used a regular drawing pencil for the dark areas. So it can be an object like this. And again, if you don't have colored pencils at home, you can use a black crayon and a white crayon. It's the same idea. So to give you a very, 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 very simplified version of this, let's take a piece of paper. Now, I'm going to take my white charcoal and my black charcoal. Now, suppose we wanted to do a snowman, just for instance. A little bit bigger. Okay. So on one side, we want high value. So I'm pressing very hard on the very edge because I want it to look like the light is bouncing off of that. But then as I bring it in, I'm softening my pressure on the pencil and I'm lightening it up so that as I come this way, it's not quite as white. And this part again, very hard. And then I'm bringing it in like that. Okay. Now, if I take a black charcoal pencil, I'm just indicating that there's a shadow on the side of the snowman. And obviously if these were actually balls of snow, there'd be a shadow there. So now I'm going to take my paper stump. Now I have black on the end of this from our last little project there. So I'm just going to smooth that. Okay. And I want it to blend into the blue. So I'm going to very lightly just smooth that edge so that it kind of blends into the blue. So in very, very simplified form, this is what we're going to do. We're going to use paper that's a medium color. So for the purposes of tonight, the easiest way I can explain this is think of your black and white photograph. It's either going to be light, medium, or dark. I know it's oversimplified, but for the purposes of learning the technique, we'll keep it simple. And then it can get much more sophisticated after that. Okay. Now... Let's give you an example. Um, so this is an example of another object. And again, I apologize, I have a lot of Halloween themed art. But what the point I want to make with this is look how much of the green paper shows through in this drawing. So think of it this way, the medium colored paper, whether it's green, gray, probably there were a lot of grays in the kits. Um, if you're using brown craft paper at home, same thing. The paper is what we call the medium color. So we're just looking for things that are very, very bright or very, very dark with our white and black charcoal pencil. And just doing that, just hitting highlights and shadows with our pencils and leaving much of the green showing through, we'll get that three-dimensional look to the picture, okay? Let me throw that one away, grab another one. Now, what I was showing you with the value scale about um, a light touch, here's another example. And you can see in the face here, again, the blue paper, most of the face is blue. There's a lot of blue in this turban. But with the white, where I wanted the highlights to be, I did it very, very lightly because there's a little shadow under her nose, and then there's a little highlight on her lip, a little highlight on her chin, her nose, the tip of her nose has a little highlight. I didn't do it really hard. I want it to look soft because it's skin, right? But you can see how much of the blue does the work for us. All we have to worry about is highlights and shadows. And just putting them in gently in a case like this, or dark, depending on what it is. Okay, so you get an idea how it kind of makes it three-dimensional just using black and white. All right, so here's Zendaya. Now, if you did the previous videos with me, you know that the easiest way to take this image and put it on paper is to darken the back of the paper with a number two pencil. That's why it's on your list. And then you would put this on a sheet of paper 
you would tape it at the top and then with a ballpoint pen you're mapping the picture by going around the shapes you don't need a whole ton of detail but you do need these like the edges of her dress would be important her ear shape would be important where her eyes very very important if we're doing a portrait so again we're using the ballpoint pen to make an outline and it kind of maps the picture onto your paper now the thing with charcoal just to backtrack a little bit it is very hard okay you can sharpen it in a regular pencil sharpener the thing you want to be careful is as you're working you might have found this out when you did the mandalorian project when you're working as you drag your hand across the paper you have a tendency to pick up the charcoal on the side of your hand so every once in a while you probably need to go and wash the edge of your hand i've done it myself it's just that it it infiltrates and it kind of migrates so i want to be a little careful with that all right so how do i do it i would take zendaya darken the back transfer her onto a piece of the paper by taping it on i outlined her then if i take this off i start with the white so i looked at this picture and every place that to me i saw highlights which would be her nose her lips the top of her lip above her eyebrows the dress was white this ear in the photograph if you look at it is much brighter than this year so this year I did with a lot of white charcoal I wanted to get the highlights of her hair you can see above her eyebrow or below her eyebrow but above her eye it's very bright here it's very bright on her forehead there's a little bit of light on her chin so you just have to look closely a lot of this is observation so from that I would go to this the reason I do the white first is because the black is very how can I say it? It just kind of migrates. It gets everywhere. So after I do the white, what I would normally do is take just a piece of paper, any kind of paper, put it over the picture. And then when I would start with my black, I would cover this so that my hand isn't dragging through the white. And looking at my photograph, I would start filling in the black part. Now I'll just give you a quick little demonstration here of the hair. Now I knew that in the photograph, she has a highlight in her hair right here. So if I was to take my... Let's see, let's take a medium. This one. Okay. Now, I drew the outline so I know that her bun is right here. Okay. Now, that's how it goes. How do I get the black into the white? In this case, I'm just going to pull my black pencil up into the highlights I already put on there. And again, up here, under the bun, I'm dragging it into that white because the highlighter in her hair, the hair is black, but that highlight looks white in the photograph. So I'm filling this in with black. And then to give you an idea, I would take my paper stump and I could smooth this out and make it even more intense black, see? When I use this, I'm spreading the charcoal so now I have the highlights in her hair, and the hair is black. So here's the photograph. Here are the highlights. Actually, I'm going to change this a little bit. I noticed here that the dark the highlight, I maybe went a little too big with the highlight. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Okay. And I would fill this in with my black charcoal. And again, I'm going to use my paper stomp. And if you don't have the paper stomp, Q-tip works fine. I'm going to take my Q-tip. And I'm going to swoosh that color around until I fill that space. The important thing to remember, though, with this is that the color of the paper, in my case, it's kind of like a tan color, does much of the work for you. So for her face, it's mostly going to be this color. The only place I would do black would be around her eyes and her eyebrows. I'm leaving her face light. And I already picked up the highlights. So if I was to do her eye, for instance, let me find my pencil. Okay. Let me just put this on here so I don't smear it for you. Okay. Looking at the photograph, she has eyeliner on, and it goes under her eye like that. And then she has, right here, a crease in her eye. Now her eyebrow, I'm going to do with a series of lines, just like your hairs would grow. Okay. 
the center of her eye where the pupil is would be very black. And then she has eyelashes coming down. Now I would take my, my stomp. Okay. I'm going to fill in her eyebrow a little bit with my paper stomp. And I can see in the picture that this crease in her eye kind of has a shadow that comes up like that. So I'm just basically taking the black with my paper stomp and I'm moving it around. Now her eye is dark, but not as dark as the pupil. So I'm just going to use the paper stomp, bring that dark color down. And it looks like she has quite a bit of eyeliner and mascara. So I'm going to come in here like so. And there's a nice shadow under here. Again, it could be eye makeup. So that's what her eye would look like. Okay, very, very simple. But most of this picture is gonna stay the medium color. I'm only putting the black where it's absolutely black in the picture. I already have the highlights in and now I'm doing the shadows. Now an area like hair, the reason I have different thicknesses of pencil is that a soft charcoal pencil, let me see if this is soft, nope, hard. A soft pencil is just that. It goes on a little bit easier. So I would fill this in with a soft pencil and then I would take my paper stomp and go back over it. Now I'll show you one that's done to give you an idea. All right, I know you're sick of Frankenstein, but sadly I do a lot of Halloween things. So here's a picture. I used the green paper on this. Now this is a good example. You can see how much green is actually showing through everywhere in this picture. His neck, his face, even his eyes, his hair. The first thing I did, much like Zendaya, I did the white highlights first, then I went back, I did his hair, and then I took my paper stump, picked up some of the black from that, and with that I could get these light areas like this and put them in with my paper stump, still leaving much of the green showing. Otherwise, it doesn't look three-dimensional. You need bright, medium, dark. But you want to go light, <laughs> light, that's contradictory. You want to be careful with too much black. You don't want it to be too too much, otherwise you're gonna get it all over. Really look for just the darkest things, like in his mouth here, you can see that there's little cracks in his lips, that type of thing. All right, I'll show you one more, and then you're gonna be on your own. Okay, again, sorry about the Halloween, but here's the bride. Now the bride, easy to do in a sense because again, the green paper is doing so much of the work for me. I really just had to pick up, where's my white pencil? Uh, here. I just had to pick up some details here like her upper lip, her nose, um, above this lip, the edge of her forehead, and of course the white of her eye. And then she has of course the little zigzaggy thing in her hair. So that I did the same way I demonstrated with Zendaya. I hit this very hard with the white then I came back with the black, but this was a very large area to do black, so I definitely used the softest pencil I had, filled it in, and then took the paper stump to make it very, very black, so it looked darker on this part of the hair. This is black too, but it's not as black. Imagine that the light is on the top of her head, so some of the curls in her hair are basically me not filling it in with black, but when I get down here, it's under her head, so it's definitely, there's no light here. So I want this to be much darker. So with this, I totally blended it in with my paper stomp. So this is the effect that you can get just using black and white on a colored ground. And again, you don't have to have this paper. I literally took this from a paper bag in the house. This works great. I've done, I've done pictures on this, no problem at all. Again, cardboard works great. They always have like a medium tone and they have a little bit of that tooth, which is nice. Um, so if you are gonna buy the paper though, probably the, it depends on what colors you want. I, again, the pads have multiple colors and I tend to use the green and blue. So I usually buy it by the sheet, but you can also buy it this way and it's rigid. So you don't have to put it on a board. You can just draw right on this and work on this. And I think that is everything I wanted to show you tonight for value. So again, value is simply the lightness and the darkness of an object or a figure. And just using the black and white charcoal, you can get really, really effective pictures that way. So I wanted to remind you that we will be having um, a virtual 
like an art display at the end of the school year. If you decide you want to enter one of your pictures or all of your pictures, that would be wonderful. But we'll give you more information as that gets closer. And I think that's it for now. And next month we're going to do um, a lesson on color, which should be interesting. Okay, that's it. Have a nice night, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.